from about the age of five years old. The violence was at that stage part of my childhood. So the perpetrator has been arrested. Then what? What happens to you? You just lost part of you. And all these years, uh, uh, it, it's still very fresh in my mind uh, to what happened. I started to bang the door, um, yelling for help, shouting for help, you know, hoping that somehow somebody would hear me. It started from a very young age of like six and seven is kind of when it started. And even into my adulthood to a, to a certain degree. One of the things he used to do to me, and again, I'm not going to be overly graphic about this, but he used to beat me. And what it, when, how he used to beat me was with, with a phone book. And I know some people will think, well, what the hell was he using a phone book for? Well, the reason why he used a phone book, because it was heavy, and the type of bruising it would leave wouldn't be the same as being punched or kicked. And uh, so he would hit me on certain parts of my body after he, he would abuse me and uh, just remind me that if I said anything, this would come or worse. I was taught to shut up, not say a thing. Where I remember I had an experience and I was living on the street at the time and I remember this one person that I'd met uh, over a period of time and somehow I built up some kind of trust with him but it ended up working out backwards and, it, and he ended up raping me. Uh, again, I'm not going to be too graphic what was done to me, but all I know is he used to, he he would he beat me pretty good. Is all I have to say. I didn't tell anybody, didn't say anything, um, and uh, I was just lost. So that experience still sets with me very very heavily to, to this day. I grew up in a village, partly in a slum area, partly in a well off area. I was the last born in a family of eight. At around 14, 15 years old, I, I, I went through sexual violence. It was kind of uh, violence that included sexual, physical, emotional, and um, I was so vulnerable at that time. I, I, just, I just wanted someone to care for me at that time, but then this, this man just took advantage of my innocence. Six months after my dad had gone, a stepfather came into my life. Things started to change from there. Didn't really connect with us kids because we weren't his. He wanted a relationship with my mum. Sometimes it would be verbal abuse and then sometimes it would be physical. It just became a daily occurrence. We were pretty much um, isolated uh, from each other. So we were in a three bedroom house and so my two sisters shared a room and I was in a room by myself. We would come home from school and go to that room and pretty much come out for a meal then go back to your room. 10 years old, um, I'd started to perpetrate violence myself and uh, over the years became a, a, a full-on perpetrator of domestic violence to um, partners over the years. And at that stage in my life, I didn't see that there was anything wrong with me because it was just how a family works. At the age of six to seven years, a help in the household touched the most intimate part of my body. Uh, I was doing a lot of gymnastics and I was standing on my hands and then he came, he touched it and I, and, and yeah, really something very strong happened in my body, very strong, 
enormous. And then I came in already into a kind of dream, as if I was not on this earth. I didn't tell anybody. It was only as I wrote at a later age, when I came to the psychiatrist, I understood by the psychiatrist of what happened because, for example, uh, when I did gymnastics, this feeling came so strong that I couldn't do the, the, the climbing and the things uh, in the playground because it became too strong. And I thought everything was normal. It started with a Facebook friend request from an unknown person. And at that moment, I was really looking for this chance. The job that was offered to me is to be a computer shop staff. I was brought in the house and then there I met the, uh, the, the person and she explained to me that the computer shop that I was expecting is actually not a computer shop itself, but it was a like cyber sex den. It was really like a bomb exploded in my head. There were girls that was trapped in there with me who were sex slaves through computer. Customers would come online to us and would instruct us what to do, whatever lascivious things that I never imagined or anticipated as a teenager. And for every lascivious things that my customer would ask me to do and I refused to do it, they would starve you. Like literally starve you until you like obey them. And I was so scared. I was helpless. I looked, I looked around and saw other girls also shivering with fear. I even came to the point that I don't know myself anymore. I was just 16 years old and I, I got to do these things that I never imagined. Back in my day, uh, they this sort of stuff you just didn't talk about. And really, if a, if a male talked about it, or even even if a girl talked about it, actually, when I think about it, it was most likely just shoved under the carpet. Even as a child, that was imposed on me from from a very young age. You know, you don't talk about your feelings. You don't talk about. You don't show any emotion or anything like that. You know, you don't want to open up about that type of stuff. And I couldn't talk. I couldn't say a word. Nothing. You go to the deepness of being lost and not knowing where to are and you come into a world of darkness. I came, it was as if I was torn away. I'm not comfortable, you know, being looked at. I'm not comfortable being stared at. There were nights that I will wake up, you know, staring into darkness and I feel empty, really. How am I able to forget this? There's a time I told my friend about this and she was like, I... They ask a lot of hows. And then immediately you say that because they have not felt that, then uh, uh, you remain like, why did I even tell them? Why did I say? And even if you get justice, there's no reparation. It was really, really hard for me to recover from that situation. It took me like, not just a year, a two, or three, but it was like a long four years fighting for justice. Long years of waiting to see the, you know, justice being served. It's just, oh, so the perpetrator has been arrested. Then what? What after that? Once you've gone through sexual violence, you're a victim and you remain to be a victim.
change happened in my life um, at a late age, so in my mid-40s. I had a circle of friends that I fitted with. One of those friends started to make changes in his life and he started doing an anger management course. You know, I sat in a room there with a whole lot of men sitting in a circle and they started having conversations about stuff that I'd never heard men talk about. And talking with me and, and starting conversations with me got me to realise that the life that I had been living right from a child and the behaviour and, and the way that I was living as an adult was actually um, all domestic violence. And started to teach me and give me the skills and the tools that I should have got in my own home as a kid as to what it was to be a man, a father and a partner. And it started to slowly change my whole life. So currently I, I run a safe house for girls survivors of sexual violence. The only thing that I refuse to say is it's uh, getting over it. It's learning to get, to, to stay with it and overcome. You know, I would think that it would get better after all these years. Well, it has in a sense that I've, I've learned to live with it in a better way and, and as of not being so self-destructive. But at the same time, talking about this will help others come out that haven't talked about it. I waited almost 50 years before my conversation came about it. Information about sexual violence should be given to children. We're going to break the cycle. Stop the harm, exactly. I don't know if someone ever asked me if I'm all right, like, are you feeling well? Are you okay? All kinds of these things could have been different if somebody had seen the signs. If only my family were aware of this kind of evilness existing in the world, they could have like stopped this to happen. Pay attention to your children. I'm thankful that there's opportunity like this to share my story, to make other people aware, of course, about this also. If nobody else will, well then I will. Just to get this going, to change, for change. You, if you could, go back and meet your 16-year-old Ruby. What would you say to your younger self? Well done, my 16 years old self for surviving. I'm so proud of you.